who you choose to identify as, the character which you choose, either consciously or unconsciously, to play, is what will be reflected back to you from the people that you talk to, the things they say to you, the things that accid accidentally happen to you. The way that you are showing up to the world is the only way the world can show up to you. Everything that's going on right now in your life, and I'm sorry if that triggers you in any way, but I'm trying to help. Everything that's going on is a reflection of something going on within you, and it starts within you. Hi, my name is Layla, and I am a mindset and manifestation coach, and I'm gonna teach you how to get what you want and live a life that is as fulfilling as possible. There's no reason why you should only make a certain amount of money, even if that is a lot, you know? Even if you're doing really well for yourself comparative to the environment around you, but you're still stuck at a certain level, if you desire more, you don't have to, but if you desire more, you can absolutely reach that. It just starts with a shift in consciousness, with a shift in the character you're choosing to identify as, and then the ideas and the thoughts and the impulses will naturally come to you to match that. We're all just, we're playing characters. I'm not Layla. I mean, I think I am, you know, I'm pretending to be. I'm the same as you though. We are the same, we're made from the same primordial substance, the same consciousness that permeates all of reality, all of this universe. And right now that consciousness is pretending to be Layla, speaking to you from this body, in this voice. It's the same thing that exists and resides within you, calling itself by your name. So when you understand that, when you understand that the role that you're playing, this identity, is so constructed, you know, it's constructed by your environment, it's constructed by who you were told you were when you were a little kid, by your family, by the society around you, by school, by media, who you're continuously told you are, and then of course, you know, your, your uh, biology, which is inherited, but when you understand that these are all just instructions, be they chemical or societal, they're instructions that have built this identity that you've constructed. And then you can find a little, a little bit of liberty within that and understand, okay, well, I don't like this part of it. I don't have to accept that. If this is limiting me, if this is holding me back from something that I desire to be and experience and have and see and do, I can drop that. It can be instantaneous. It might not be. It might require a little bit of persistence, but that's all it takes. You gaining control over your mind, your mind as a tool, your mind as your best friend, not your worst enemy, you as the master of your mind, okay? We don't have to fear it. I saw this video today and it was asking people, um, some guy was asking people on the street, is there anything scarier than being alone with your own thoughts? And everyone said no. It doesn't have to be that way. It's like you think there's a monster under the bed, but then you pull up the covers and you look under the bed long enough and you see there's no monster, it's just a teddy bear. You're gonna get to that point where you do that. It might not be now, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be something that you feel impelled to do by your environment and by the requirements of your environment, but one day, eventually, be that in this lifetime or the next, you'll peer under the covers and you'll see so many little teddy bears who seem so scary in the shadows. I'm getting off topic now, but your self-concept, the character that you choose to identify as, determines the world around you. So we're going to start with that. Yes, I can teach you the manifestation techniques, and yes, they will work, but this is more important, and this will give you longevity in your manifestations. Your self-concept truly dictates your entire experience of reality, because it's what you believe yourself to be in relation to everything else in your life. It's what you identify as, and it's what you think is possible for you. What you can even conceptualize as being realistic or possible to happen to you. Now, um, I teach the Law of Assumption based largely on Neville Goddard's teachings, and one thing that he talked about is everyone is you pushed out. Uh, this may be something that some people get intuitively, other people might find it a bit contentious and have some resistance to it, but let's look at it from several angles. So from the first angle, 
We live in a subjective universe. Everything that we experience is filtered through our subjective five senses, which then gets filtered through our individual meaning-making systems in our subconscious minds. So something that happens to me and means something to me personally might not even get registered or picked up by you because it's just not in your orb of, of consciousness and things that mean something to you. Whatever beliefs that we already have constructed in our subconscious mind, we unconsciously seek confirmation for. So when you're interacting with another person, let's say, there are certain behaviors that will get picked up by you that might not get picked up by me. Those behaviors tend to be the ones which trigger our subconscious beliefs. When something is in opposition to something that you believe or that you fear, or even if it's a seeming confirmation of it, it's like an alarm bell sounding off and your mind zeroes in on it and highlights it. And through observing it, through giving it the power of your attention, it actually creates more of this. Now, we can also look at it in a slightly more metaphysical sense, and that is the assertion that we are all one consciousness, that all consciousness is intimately interconnected, that there is just one mind in the whole universe. So when there is a change within me, in my consciousness, because that's all that I can really control, I can't control your mind, but if there is a change within my consciousness, it affects yours as well. And everyone is you pushed out goes a little deeper than you may think once i teach you the techniques you're gonna start hearing the affirmations which you've said privately in your own head but no one can hear you being parroted back to you by people around you and that's when you start to really understand that we are all deeply interconnected and that any way that someone is showing up in your life is a reflection of who you believe yourself to be in relation to them. And that you have a lot of control over this. You know, when you first start manifesting, you might start having some successes that seem quite easy. And then, using the same exact techniques, you kind of hit a plateau and it doesn't seem to be working anymore. And this isn't to say that the things you're trying to manifest are too big to manifest or that it doesn't work. It just means you've come to a new level in your mind and it's time to do a little bit more digging and growing and improving yourself. Our triggers are great blessings, in fact. Our triggers and our intrusive thoughts because they illuminate to us some beliefs that we have that aren't very helpful. Now, I'm gonna give an example. Um, I've always gotten good grades in school. I've been the top of my class, been put in gifted classes. I don't have any belief that maybe I'm not smart enough. So if someone were to make fun of me for not knowing something, I'd laugh if it was funny. And there would be nothing there to get triggered. There would be no intrusive thought like, well, maybe I'm not smart enough or some kind of angry reaction towards them because there's nothing there for it to rub against. So the intrusive thoughts that you have that you can't control, that you would like to control because you know they're not helpful to you, but you seemingly can't control them, they're actually there to show you something about yourself. What, you have to ask yourself, what belief might I have that is causing this trigger or this intrusive thought? And then we can flip it and you ask yourself, what belief would I need to have not to be having this intrusive thought? So another cornerstone of Neville Goddard, another little principle that he taught was circumstances don't matter might be radical to some but it's you know it is what it is i'm gonna explain it let's say you um start dating someone and for some reason it doesn't work out maybe you know you're gonna tell me it didn't work out because it was long distance and then with your next relationship you tell me well they couldn't commit to me because they were still hung up on their ex and then your next relationship well they couldn't commit to me because they're prioritizing their career right now those circumstances don't matter What's going on is that you are creating relationships to confirm some belief that you hold, which probably is something like, I'm not worthy of commitment. Again, I don't know what it is for you, it's different for everyone. But 
your subconscious mind is infinitely more intelligent and creative than your conscious mind. So it creates these obstacles that you probably couldn't consciously come up with. And you, you're going to be impressed with how creative you actually are when you realize that that's what's been going on the whole time. And when you go to the root of the issue and you work on that belief that you aren't worthy of commitment and you brainwash yourself into thinking, or let's say you teach yourself into thinking, into believing that you are worthy of commitment, you will begin to see that those seemingly insurmountable circumstances in front of you dissolve, as if by magic, through no effort of your own. So this really goes to show that the circumstances, the excuses that you use, the reasons why you believe that you can't have what you want are irrelevant. They are irrelevant. What's going on within you is what's relevant. And so these are also really great guidance um, systems for us to use to figure out our beliefs. If there is a situation in your life that isn't going the way you'd like it to be, Maybe you notice a pattern in your history with similar situations. And I want you to write a list of reasons why you think you can't have it your way. You know, the seemingly like realistic 3D reasons for why you can't have it your way. And then look for the pattern. Look for the reason underneath them. Which core belief might they be suggesting? When we start working on our self-concept and we improve it, and we begin to identify with a new version of ourselves, the changes will begin with you. And then they will be reflected in the simulation that your mind is creating around you. But they begin with you and your body. They begin with the way that your nervous system reacts to stimulus around you. They begin with literally your neurochemistry, the neurotransmitters and hormones that your body will start producing now. They begin with the way that you carry yourself, how much energy you have throughout the day, and especially the thoughts and ideas and creative impulses that seem to come to you out of nowhere. Um, this happened to me very personally with the fact that I spent my teens telling myself, oh, I'm just not creative enough. I always wanted to be creative. I wanted to make some kind of art. I didn't know what kind. But for some reason, I drilled it into my head, I'm just not creative enough. If I was more creative, I would. How many creative ideas do you think I had in that time? Not very many. And then I grew up a little and got a little more audacious. And I just started saying, yeah, I'm creative. I'm super creative. I'm an artist. I wasn't even making art, but I was just telling myself and telling others, yeah, I'm an artist. Things began to shift very quickly. I started doing photography, making short films, doing writing projects, poems. I don't even know what, but I, I identify as a creative person now. That's just who I am. And I get a lot of creative ideas. I see the world in a different way now. I see it through my camera lens, for example. You know, if you start telling yourself that you are already successful, you decide that, you determine, you assert, I am successful. You decide, I am already a multimillionaire. The ideas that you have throughout the day, the impulses that you have to do certain things, literally your neurochemistry will begin to change. You're going to start, I don't know, waking up earlier, wanting to wake up earlier, naturally, wanting to work out, wanting to get shit done, because you're no longer getting in your own way with this concept of, well, I'm not successful yet, and this and that, and this and that. And it doesn't have to be so radical, you know? You can start off with smaller things. There are all these ways that we self-sabotage, like, oh, I'm just not organized. I'm just not a morning person. I can't wake up early. I'm just not good at being consistent with anything, you know? I just can't stay consistent. What are you doing? <laughs> Your subconscious hears these commands, and as it is a 3D printer for the world around you, it prints that out to confirm it to you. Starting with you and your body and then the world around you, starting with the way that people treat you and react to you and the opportunities presented to you, it all starts with who you see yourself as, what you identify as, the assumptions that you hold about yourself and the world around you. You may doubt what I'm saying. You may doubt the efficiency of saying something like, oh, I, I love waking up early, I'm a morning person. Because maybe you've tried it a couple times and it didn't work or maybe you feel like you're not strong enough like your mind isn't strong enough I'm challenging you to just be a little more persistent 
because this does work. I'm telling you. Make new assumptions, persist in them until they harden into fact. It's all you have to do. It's done.